Global Rights Watch, Amnesty International has urged President Mahmoud Dubari to fulfill his commitment on accountability and ensure security officers found guilty of maltreatment of citizens face the full weight of the law. The Human Rights Group, at the launch of its 2016 report, condemned the death penalty as capital punishment gradually being embraced by states in Nigeria, insisting that it must be abolished. Our correspondent Gloria Mezueke has more. Year after year, damning revelations trail the Amnesty International report on Nigeria's human rights violation. The 2016 report is no different. The Human Rights Watch Group once again urged the Nigerian government to keep its promise on accountability and human rights. Despite the president's repeated promises, the, prim, the president of Nigeria had made a lot of, you know, uh, promises that those, you know, uh, security officers that were found guilty of committing these, you know, um, offenses, they are actually going to pass the law of the land. But we are yet to see that. A human rights group made no bones about their stance on the death penalty as capital punishment and torture, advocating a law on these. Do you uh, decongest the prisons by killing more people and sentencing more people to death? And is that a kind of uh, a control measure in a very civilized uh, uh, country like, like us? I mean, internationally, we, we, sh we shouldn't be talking about this. What's going on about reforms? The special anti-robbery squad, SAS, a police, have been using its detention centers for extortion and torture. Nigerian National Assembly is yet to pass anti-torture bill which seeks to criminalize and prohibit torture in Nigeria. Meanwhile, the Nigerian army in a statement described the accusations of human rights abuse and murder leveled against the military as a lie. Sometimes when you do well, kindly tell us reactions by the army perhaps leave the issues hanging in the balance but the undeterred group maintains that it will release more reports hoping for better action by the government gloria umezuki channels television news the management of the University of Ilori has justified the recent suspension of two of its lecturers by the university's governing council. The lecturers, Kaya Falaya and Dr. Solomon Oyeleko, who are the factional chairman and the secretary of the university chapter of the academic staff union of the university, were accused of insubordination and causing disaffection within the university. The affected lecturers on their part alleged that they were being victimized for exposing corruption in the institution. Recently, the management and governing council of the University of Ilori suspended two of its lecturers for alleged insubordination and causing disaffection within the university system. The vice chancellor, Professor Abdul Ghaniu Ambali, insists that the suspension was necessary to sustain the high level of discipline of the institution. The suspension of uh, the candidate, uh, you know, is undergoing the normal university rules and regulations. Uh, if somebody is trying to cause disaffection, you know, within the university system, uh, it's not because of this. The, the person had, uh, you know, had uh, two queries before this uh, last uh, one. However, one of the affected lecturers, a factional chairman of ASU and the institution, Dr. Kayode Afolayo, believes their suspension cannot be unconnected to their whistleblowing activities, which has rocked the management of the school in recent times. The only reason why we think we have been suspended is because we raised issues about uh, the culture of impunity in the University of Ilori, and we also raised issues about uh, classic incident of uh, nepotism. Before now, we had, you know, put in petitions to the EFCC, the ICPC, the CCB, and the visitor of the university, protesting the breaches and the illegality going on in the University of Ilori. Meanwhile, the factional vice chairman of ASU, Dr. Bode Olumori, who was also affected by the suspension, is calling on the federal government to intervene in the matter, especially as it encourages Nigerians to expose corrupt practices wherever they find themselves. 
the federal government has given us a go ahead to blow whistles. And what we have done is to blow whistle. And if the federal government is now looking at us as whistleblowers and we are suffering and our colleagues are on suspension, then something has to take place. As it stands, the duration of the suspension is not stated in the letters and the suspended lecturers have also petitioned the Academic Staff Union of Universities for redress. And for the latest in business, here's Emana Amawe. You first. First Bank. Hello and welcome to Business News. Officials of the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority have been speaking on its plans for the year 2017. Speaking at a meeting with journalists in Abuja, the managing director of the NSIA, Mr. Uche Oji, says... They plan more investments in the areas of housing, education, health, and small-scale agriculture. This, he says, will address the infrastructural needs in the country, as well as boost socio-economic growth. And currencies traders say that confidence is gradually returning to Nigeria's foreign exchange market on the back of Tuesday's FX policy easing by the central bank and the sale of $370 million on Tuesday to improve liquidity. Pressure has also eased at the FX market with interbank spot rate still about 305 naira, 20 kobo to the US dollar. An FX trader with Rand Merchants Bank, Mr. Ayo Deji Oyeni, told Channel Television that positive comments are coming from the currency traders' community as they await more liquidity injection from the financial regulator. Liquidity in the financial market is expected to ease before the week runs out in anticipation of January FAC allocations hitting the system not later than Tuesday, Thursday. In the meantime, at the fixed income markets, traders say Treasury bills rates are slightly bearish on liquidity drain for Tuesday's foreign exchange bidding, while Naira bonds steadied at about 1.30 p.m. local time. And the domestic bourse closes today's session nearly flat by the same percentage points it ended on Tuesday, but this time around on the negative side. Here's BC with details of the day's activities. <laughs> Midweek transactions at the local equities market sees the key benchmark indicators close slightly negative at 0.01% and made a negative wide gap on the price table. 19 stocks led by Unilever, UACN Properties and United Capital posted losses which reflected on the market. On the other hand, only eight gainers saw not too impressive increases in the share price, with two brewery giants, Guinness and Nigerian Breweries, leading the advances. The top three most traded equities for the day are Zenith Bank, United Capital and Fidelity Bank, while a total of 118.4 million shares were traded in 2,579 deals worth over 1.79 billion naira. And that's it on the stock market report. I am BC Adebayo. In the meantime, U.S. stocks take a breather following an impressive run with all four major markets hitting all-time highs. With more details on equities and an outlook on Wall Street, here's Joe Malandrino, business correspondent from the Nasdaq market site in New York. U.S. stocks took a breather at the open of trade following another record-setting day on Wall Street as the Dow Jones Industrial Average, S&P 500, NASDAQ Composite, and Russell 2000 Index all posted new record-closing highs, adding to their gains last week, and they're on pace for the best monthly returns since March of 2016. Now, the real story is the NASDAQ, with Apple, which is up 19% at $137 from $115 at the start of the year. Apple's about 15% of the NASDAQ, so it's responsible for nearly 3% of the 7% gain in the index that we've seen since the beginning of the year. So much for February historically being a down month for the market. Let's take a look at some impressive stats coming into today's trade. Tuesday marked the 50th straight session. The S&P hasn't moved more than 1% in both directions, and it's been almost 90 days since the S&P 500 saw a decline of over 1%. Also note the NASDAQ has not had back-to-back -back losing days yet in 2017. Now let's take a look at the Dow. That topped the 20,700 level, now up over 700 points in the last 12 days, and up from the 20,000 level that we crossed 
back on January 25th. The Dow is now up eight straight days, while both the S&P and the Nasdaq have gained in nine of the past 10 sessions, and we closed at all-time record highs on Tuesday. That Trump bump rally momentum seems to be here to stay in the markets. From the Nasdaq market site in New York, I'm Jill Malandrino, and this is VOA Channel's Business News. And in Europe, shares ended broadly unchanged after hitting a new 14-month high earlier today on the new latest corporate earnings and falling commodities prices. But let's take a look at how the rest of the markets fared on Wednesday. That's business news tonight. I'm Emana Amawe. It's back to you, Millicent. You first. First Bank. Thank you, Emana. Some youths and traders today brought business activities on the ever busy Lagos Abiyokuta Expressway to a halt following a protest over alleged invasion of the rice market by men of the Nigerian Customs Service. The Customs Public Relations Officer Federal Operations Unit, Jerry Atta, explained that customs operatives went there to evacuate bags of rice alleged to have been smuggled into the country. Traders at the popular rice market in Songota area of Ogun State venting their anger over invasion of their markets in the wee hours of Wednesday, allegedly by men of the customs service. The protest is not limited to the markets, they also head for the expressway. Business activities and vehicular movement come to a halt for several hours until the intervention of the police area commander who drafts his men to dislodge the protesters. The rice sellers allege that men of the Federal Operations Unit of the Customs Service broke into their shops and carted away monies and goods worth millions of naira. We've seen a lot of women crying, dying. So, some are dying as I speak to you. So we really need justice because if they are actually on a legal uh, operation, they should have, they should have make it a kind of it should have been a kind of uh, uh, broad day uh, operation. But the Customs Public Relations Officer, Federal Operations Unit Zone A, Jerry Atta, dismisses the traders' claims, explaining that men of the command, while on surveillance, notice smugglers storing rice in shops in the Songo area. They then stormed the facility with other security agents. Off camera, he told Channel's television that men of the command evacuated 1,870 bags of 50 kilogram rice and 43 jerry cans of vegetable oil, which, according to him, were smuggled. As normalcy gradually returns to the area, many question how that number of contraband items got into the country in the first place without being intercepted by the agencies charged with responsibility of manning the borders. And South Africa's government has dismissed Nigeria's call to the African Union to intervene in the current xenophobic attacks in the country. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Clayson Moniella in an interview with a local newspaper said there was no need for AU intervention because the attacks were isolated incidents. He described them as sporadic criminal incidents and residents had complained they were unhappy about drugs and prostitution. He also dismissed insinuations that Nigerians were being targeted in the attacks insisting that South Africans are not xenophobic. His comments come as over 30 shops owned by foreigners were looted and burnt down in Pretoria. The senior special assistant to the president on foreign affairs and diaspora, Abike Dabirewa, on Monday, called on the African Union to intervene in the situation, fearing there could be more attacks on Nigerians and other foreigners living in the country. And still ahead on the news at 10, 
Confederation of African Football seeks 10 slots in FIFA's proposed 48-team World Cup. That's on sports. Stay with us.